This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. The market looks like it's just, uh, it's exploding right now. How you feeling, Cam? Good morning, sir. You doing all right? I'm good, oh. How you feeling? Well, I can you know, hear you. It sounds like you're feeling great already. Yeah, I'm in Vegas. I didn't have okay. much sleep last night because uh, by the time I got into this room and set everything up, it was like 1 a.m. And as you know, yep. to do the 10 a.m. show, I got to be up at 6 a.m. Well, I got yep. I yep. usually I would be up at 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. You know, but I only did an hour of prep. So yeah, uh, but the, t- I, the time change, the time change is brutal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do anything about that, but that's all right. I mean, tonight yeah. I'll be at U2 in the Sphere. You think I'm yeah. going to be complaining? It's no, it's all well team. worth it. Bro. Well yes, worth it, absolutely, absolutely. So, so two nights in a row of the Sphere and you two. That's uh, that's uh, that's I'm pretty blessed. nice. That's pretty I'm nice. Blessed. Let, Very blessed. Let us know how that Sphere is, man. I, I I'm jealous. It looks awesome. Oh, I already did it. I, I went opening night, bro. I was oh, here. Really? I was here for the Canelo fight for Showtime, and uh-huh. uh, and then and then because Showtime flew me out here. I said, let me go find a ticket for opening night. And I found a ticket for opening night. So I know how the whole thing goes. And as I've told everybody that ever asked me about it, they perfected the sound of a concert. Mm. The greatest okay. sounding building I have ever been to. And wow. I and I've been and I've been to well over twelve hundred concerts probably. Easily. Wow. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that is That's the impressive. best, bro. That, that is yeah, yeah, they uh, they 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 really nailed it, man. Uh, all right, so you get ready for you the old your old beat, David Long's old yeah. team, yeah, uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and obviously, this is a game that just like last week and just like next week, these are these are games that you need to take care of. But the maturity of this team, and and, and that's the part that I think. Even as I start the fire uh, in Buffalo about, okay, you got to start beating good teams and all that shit. If you look at it, they've progressed against those three good teams. And then the defense has progressed and Jalen Ramsey. And then the other thing is they have been very mature about this, Cam. And I can tell you this doesn't happen for decades. They're taking care of business against the teams they're supposed to. Normally they would get tripped. Even good teams were watching around the league get are getting tripped up by yes. bad teams. You know, kudos to the Dolphins, and hopefully they'll continue that path over the next two weeks. Yeah, there's an obsession with this how the Dolphins do against elite teams. And I understand and that that'll continue to be a storyline um, until they face those games again. But I, Mike McDaniel yeah. mentioned it this week. I think they deserve credit for winning all the games you're supposed to. Like that is hard in this league like every team is taking your best shot they've heard all week in their meeting rooms and the media about the high flying dolphins how fast they are and how great they are and teams are pissed by the time they get to sunday and they play you they're like man i'm tired of hearing about this uh and you still beat them and so that is impressive that is a sign of a good team to win the games that you're supposed to win consistently um, and on the road at home they've done that this will be another opportunity a monday night environment to not come out flat to show the world because uh, as Dolphins fans will know, the world perception is, is quickly shifted on teams. And so you're on national audience. If you come out like the Jags did, the Jags came out last week uh, against the Bengals on a national audience with the opportunity to show that we're for real, we're a real AFC contender and not just a paper tiger. And they lost the Bengals. And so everybody who questioned or doubted the Jags right. is going to still doubt them and even more. The Dolphins have another opportunity here against the Titans team that's scrappy, but not very talented. And so ultimately, they're going to need to take care of business, handle them uh, well, win comfortably, or else there's going to be no ways of, oh, this team is just a pretender. They're just doing this and that. Um, But I think they match up well with the Titans. No Jeffrey Simmons on the D-line for the Titans uh, is good news for Miami. He's their best Uh, maybe their best overall player, and he's out. Um, Derrick Henry will play, um, but that offense has taken a lot of steam out of his boat the last few weeks. They had a couple hot weeks when Will Levis first started, and now they've uh, kind of fallen back to to ground earth. Yeah, I I mean, listen, again, 
This is a game you're supposed to, you know, handle and move on. And it's more about you, actually. It's really more about maybe some of the injuries that you may have, some of the guys. Yeah. That have. And by the way, that to, to kind of shift to another thing that I love that's been so positive uh, been pop-ups, dude. I mean, you've never seen this either, Cam. I want you to know that you're covering a lot of shit. That hasn't happened since yep. I was young, bro. Right. Okay? It, yep. it, it takes Shula to have backups that would in on offense and defense to actually, you know, it's back in the Shula era of the 70s to have mm. this kind of front office because right. the Austin Jackson, you know, has come full circle. And that 2020 draft, I think, Enough shit was talked about with that 2020 draft. What you're covering now, there, there's a generation of Dolphin fans that haven't mm -hmm. experienced this. And this generation of Dolphin fans hasn't experienced this for well over 40 years, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. This is special. It's, it's a special. Um, it's the reason why this season feels like it has sustainability even when they lose a piece here and there, right? Like Toronto Armstead goes down a couple times this season. And I, there's going to be some fans who make jokes about him, you know, being, you know, essentially paper mache and he breaks down all the time. But the reality is this time last year, you lose Toronto Armstead. It's a panic. It's a, oh it's my over. goodness. It's over. This, this, yeah, this is it. This is it. Like we can't overcome this. Now it's kind of like shrug, like, uh, you know, Stick Kendall We're Lamb fine. in. Stick Keon Smith in. We'll keep it pushing, you know. Get him fully healthy. Don't take your time, you know. Like, it's, it's a different mentality, and I do think that depth plays a huge factor in it. You lose Isaiah Wynn for a season. They've kept it kept it chugging at guard. They kept it chugging at tackle when, when Teron's been out. Even when Robert Hunt's been out, they've, they've figured out ways to plug multiple guard spots. And so that's credit to the front office. You find good – Good backup deaf offensive lineman. That's not an easy challenge. That's not an easy task. Everybody's looking for good depth on the O line. So Chris Greer, uh, Brandon Shore, and that team have done a really good job of, of finding guys who can fill in. Yeah, no, and everywhere else too. I mean, other positions too have come in and have filled in and have done a nice job, and they haven't they haven't missed a beat. And uh, I think that's also been really productive. The Austin Jackson story. You know, yep. uh, I was telling uh, one of uh, one of uh, our uh, followers on, on Twitter that the bonus of all of this is, you know, sometimes you pay a guy and early on after his first contract, but you maybe don't know enough about him because he was young and then he kind of like reached his reached his pinnacle, right? Uh, but in this case, when it comes to Tua, whenever you got to pay him, and now you paid Austin Jackson. They have been through the hell that most players have never been through in their lives. And now you know how tough Austin Jackson is physically and mentally. And so it's pretty cool that you could give this guy a contract and not yep. think that it's like flukish. It's like this guy's been through hell, bro. This guy's for Absolutely. real. Yeah, he's got a really cool story. Like, I think people forget uh, he was a 20-year-old. Uh, off of the tackle, who was a very raw prospect. He was drafted because he was a, a uber athlete um, coming out of USC. He didn't really have the full experience. He, his body frame wasn't fully up to space. He had just come off off season where he gave his sister bone marrow to save her life. And so he lost a bunch of weight. Um, and then he gets thrown into a fire of a 2020 season where the team is awful. And there's not really a lot of, of room for him to grow. And so his first two years, like Tua's first two years, were relatively rocky, at least from the public landscape, right? So he dealt with that. Then he gets injured last year, misses pretty much the whole season. And everybody, you know, everybody called him a bust. I mean, the reality is the Dolphins essentially called him a bust by picking up, not picking up his You just haven't shown us enough at this point for us to see it. And what did he do? He didn't pout. He went to work. And he and Butch Berry and his offensive staff got the most out of him. He's having the best season of his career. He's playing like one of the best 10 to 12 right tackles in football. And uh, he deserves it. He deserves 
all the money that he's got. And I'm happy for him, man. He's a guy who stood in front of us and told us that he was going to get it right this season, and he backed up his words. Yeah, and let me tell you something. One more caveat to add to his story, uh, which explains how misunderstood he is, okay? And this started already from the draft, my friends. In the draft, uh, there were different opinions about him, right? And people thought he was a little bit overrated because it was inconsistent. And when you mentioned the bone marrow, let's also mention that he wasn't strong enough to practice throughout the week at USC. He mm-hmm. actually just played every week at USC after the bone marrow and still lasted the whole season, for, which again shows you how tough this guy is, dude. Right. Yes, right. bro. And then you get into a situation where, you, okay, so all of a sudden you're already being questioned as a draft pick, but He's 20. He had bone marrow surgery. He was weakened. Like, you, you know, but you don't but you don't take that into account. And then Pepe Le Pew takes over and the poor man's not ready to coach him. And then that doesn't set him up for success. You know what I mean? And so right. this story is fantastic. The, the, by the way, the Eichenberg story that's developing could be another fantastic story that the front office knew what they were doing. It's just the structure around the young men wasn't there to develop. And sometimes it takes time. The reality is offensive linemen sometimes take yeah. time. I know we're we're very much a microwave society. And it's, if they're not good by year one, dump them. You messed up, get rid of them. But sometimes you got to cook the offensive linemen a little bit. You got to let them, let them put them in the slow cooker and say, hey, you know, that, that's how Kendall you're going to get the best Lamb. Yeah. Kendall Lamb found yeah. his way. What is it? What year is this? What year Probably is this? Probably what, nine? Nine or ten, <laughs> right? Yeah. He found the right system. He found right. the right coaches. He might have been in the wrong system with the wrong people his entire career, dude. Yeah. Kendall probably never had these kind the kind of the, the right coaches he needed. And and that's why, you know, Austin Jackson and Liam Eikenberg become such a great lesson for all of us. Maybe. You know, I have a little patience. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And look what happens if you have some patience and you stick with it. Can you imagine if they would have dumped? Austin Jackson after this past year and said, hey, and then you watch him somewhere else. Maybe maybe he does have the success elsewhere. Maybe he doesn't. But imagine him finally hitting this break in year four when you gave up on him and said, hey, three years. Because there were a lot of – let's keep it what it is. There were a lot of fans, people out there, you know, people in the media who said, hey, we've seen enough of Austin Jackson. Yeah. Three okay. years. You got to go sure. out there, get an upgrade, move on from him, sign another right tackle. It's not working. We admit. I'm guilty. Give up. I'm guilty. Yeah. And – and, you know, three years is a lot of time. That That's enough time for a lot of folks. But for Austin Jackson, he just needed the fourth. And, you know, I, and let me tell you something. I uh, I gave him a break the first two years because you were on with us, uh, with Pepe Le Pew. Uh, I gave all the linemen a break because I thought it was the coaching that was going on. But then last year with the injuries and then the inconsistency at the beginning of camp this year, I was like, oh, God, this guy's not turning the corner. And then, right. and then it yep. went on, and he got on a roll, which is absolutely amazing. So, Cam, who's next? Hmm. Who's next in the contract? Um, Robert Hunt, if he can get healthy, I think that Robert Hunt would be the one. He, I think they they understand the importance of prioritizing that young offensive line. Um, I don't know if we see Christian Wilkins done in season. I think that's going to be an off season one. Um, Zach Sealer already got his. Um, and so my thought is that you go on back on the offensive line and you take care of Robert Hunt. I think Connor Williams is probably going to be another uh, offseason decision. Um, but if you do your young drafted players, you started with Austin Jackson. I think next up is Robert Hunt. You go ahead and take care of him, make him a well-paid right guard and keep that right side of your line will solidify for at least the next three, three years. So you mean to tell me that in one draft, the Miami Dolphins found their quarterback, their yep. right tackle, which is a left tackle in this offense, yep. and the right guard, which is the right 
which is the left ta- left guard in this offense. Actually, the most important guards, the most important tackle, and the most important position, they found that all in one draft, 2020. It did. It, did. it ended up being a heck of a draft, huh? No, it ended up becoming a legendary draft. Right. You're just Not a good draft, a legendary draft. Okay? Right. I mean, yep. that, that's, that's pretty nasty, bro. That's pretty it nasty. Is. Okay, one last thing. Is Keon Smith or Lamb going to play, and can we put Teron Armstead on ice for a couple of weeks? I don't need his ass until Baltimore, bro. Yeah, I really I, don't. I think, yeah, I think that you probably see T.A. You know, T.A. is such a, it's a tough – it's always a tough call for him because he, throughout his career, has made a knack of fighting through these injuries. Like, it hasn't been a single season of his career where he's been, like, 100%. He's Like, his DNA is I fight through stuff I probably shouldn't fight through. And so this is another situation where he probably should sit a week or two, but it's not enough that you need to put him on IR. And so you, you got – Mike Bidane is going to have to fight with him because it's like, yes, one or two more weeks will get him to where he's 100%, but for how long? You know, maybe a week or two later he gets something else. And so is it better to just have him play through it all and just, and just take it as it is or try to at least get – as much 100% healthy as he can before the next ailment comes up. Um, I I think that they're going to be fine. Uh, I think Keon Smith will be ready to go. Um, I'm not sure about Kendall Lamb, but they'll have a left tackle. It's just whether or not they want an 80%, 70% to run Armstead um, this week. So I would rest them. You know, you know my thoughts. I look at the schedule, and maybe I'm playing with fire a little bit, but I look at the Titans, I look at the Jets, and I say – we can get past these games with uh, Kendall Lamb or Keon Smith. Uh, I want to see you in, in Dallas versus Dallas versus Baltimore. And so I would spend the next couple weeks and let Robert Hunt get healthy, let Teron Armstead get healthy, and try to bring both of those boys back Christmas Eve uh, against Dallas. Hey, uh, how many teams in the NFL have four tackles? Not many. I don't know many okay. at all. Yeah, okay. that's a very good depth. Okay. Keon Smith. Keon Smith. I mean, they spent time developing him, and he was ready when the time has come. I mean, you you gotta love these guys, bro. They know what the hell they're doing. All right, go enjoy your movie. What are you watching? Uh, Hunger Games, the new Hunger Games movie. The new Hunger Games. Okay. All right, and you're smart. Ten thirty. Ain't nobody gonna be there. You don't have yeah. to deal with a whole bunch of kids. Uh, oh, yeah, that is genius. That's what I like to do myself. Afternoon. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Avoid Absolutely. the crowds. All right. Well, All right be though. blessed. Have a great weekend, my friend. We'll catch up on Tuesday. All right, you too. Thank you, sir. Right. There you go. The great Cam Wolf. And we love our friends at KSDTCPAs. Use that QR code. Let me tell you, folks, your business, you need to take it to the next level. We got, you know, when it comes to tax season, when it comes to preparing for your taxes, when it comes to preparing your business, see, that's what KSDT, it's not just about your taxes, all right? It's about payroll planning. It's about investment planning. It's about figuring out what you're doing with your business. Maybe you're thinking of selling. You want to know what your business is personally. You want to do your taxes, will, whatever it is you want to do, please call the great people at KSDT CPAs. And they're hiring offices in Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County, and a new office in Charlotte, North Carolina. So if you happen to live anywhere in South Florida, Dade, Broward, or Palm Beach, or in Charlotte, North Carolina, they're hiring in all those offices. Give them a ring, 305-670-3370. Use that code reach out to our great friends at KSDT CPA. 